The 777 has three independent hydraulic systems. Left, center, and right. Each system has its own reservoir. The left system is powered by an engine driven pump and an electric motor pump. The right system is also powered by an engine driven pump and an electric motor pump. The left and right hydraulic systems are identical. The engine driven pumps are the primary pumps. They are the main source of hydraulic power and operate when the engines are running. The electric pumps are the demand pumps. They supplement the primary pumps when system demand is high. The center hydraulic system uses two electric pumps as the primary pumps. Two air-driven pumps serve as demand pumps. The air pumps are powered by bleed air. Depending on demand, one or two pumps operate. A ram air turbine or RAT provides backup hydraulic power to the center hydraulic system. The airstream powers the RAT. There are shutoff valves on the left and right hydraulic systems and isolation valves on the center hydraulic system. The valves close during certain non-normal conditions. A similar diagram appears on the hydraulic synoptic. However, the symbology is different. Now, look at how the hydraulic components are shown on the hydraulic synoptic. Here are the hydraulic reservoirs, the hydraulic lines, the engine driven pumps, the electric pumps, the air driven pumps, and the rat. This diagram is part of the hydraulic synoptic. Select the hydraulic synoptic to view the complete synoptic. In addition to the diagram of the hydraulic components, the hydraulic synoptic shows the hydraulically powered systems, system fluid quantities in percent of normal service level, and system pressures in PSI. System pressure is amber if pressure is low. Hydraulic system information can also be seen on the status display. Select the status display. Like the hydraulic synoptic, the status display shows hydraulic system quantities and pressures. If a hydraulic reservoir requires refilling, RF appears next to the system quantity. Now let's look at what systems use hydraulic power. The left hydraulic system powers the left thrust reverser and some of the flight controls. The right hydraulic system powers similar systems. It powers the right thrust reverser and some of the flight controls. Additionally, the right system powers the normal brakes. These systems are powered by the center hydraulic system. The center hydraulic system also powers some of the flight controls. Any one system can adequately power enough of the flight controls for safe flight. The center hydraulic system also powers the flaps and slats as well as the landing gear, steering, and the alternate and reserve brake systems.
The controls for the hydraulic system are located on the overhead panel. This is the normal panel configuration prior to initial power-up. Verify the rat unlocked light is extinguished. The C1 and C2 primary pump switches are off and the demand pump selectors are off. Once AC power is established, the fault lights illuminate. The fault lights illuminate when pump pressure is low or pump fluid temperature is high. During pre-flight, the pumps are not running. The fault lights illuminate due to low pump pressure. Select the hydraulic synoptic. Configure the hydraulic panel for engine start. First, rotate the right demand pump selector to auto. Hydraulic fluid transfer into the right system is possible when the right system is not pressurized. Setting the right demand pump selector before selecting the other pumps prevents fluid transfer. Next, turn on the C1 and C2 primary pumps. Touch the highlighted area. Now rotate the remaining demand pump selectors to auto. In the auto position, the demand pumps operate only when additional system output is required or when the primary pumps are not running. In auto, the fault lights remain extinguished when the demand pumps are performing their normal automatic operation. Notice the C1 and C2 demand pump fault lights remain extinguished even though there is low pressure at the pumps. During engine start, the left primary pump assumes the hydraulic load for the left demand pump. The right demand pump remains on until the airplane is airborne. The center system demand pumps begin operating during the takeoff roll to be ready for landing gear retraction. Retract the landing gear. The center system demand pumps stop operating after landing gear retraction. Extend the landing gear and again notice the center system demand pumps. Only one demand pump is required in this situation. When the engines are shut down, the demand pumps operate to maintain hydraulic pressure. The engines are shut down. Configure the hydraulic panel. The left and right primary pumps and the left and center demand pumps. Turn off the right demand pump last to prevent fluid transfer. Touch the highlighted area. It's the first flight of the day and electrical power has not yet been established on the airplane. Configure the hydraulic panel accordingly. All pumps should be off except the left and right primary pumps. You now have electrical power and are setting the panels for engine start. Configure the hydraulic panel. The right demand pump is selected to auto first to prevent fluid transfer. Touch the highlighted area. The flight has been completed and the engines are shut down. Configure the hydraulic panel. 